In color, the continuing story of Peyton Place. herself and her baby. Last night, something happened in the winter home. A small moment, a gesture, a look between two people. And now Jill knows she must do something about it. Yes, I have an appointment with Dr. Rossi. I'm Jill Smith. Hello, Jill. Oh, Mr. Rossi, thanks for coming so soon. It's all right. I'll give you a witness. Fine. Well? It's kind of difficult to say to you. Try. Okay. Reverend Winter stared at me last night. I was in the chapel and I turned around and Mary was staring at me. And then what? Well, and then nothing. There didn't have to be any and then what. That was enough. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, no. Look, I'm not confused. I'm not imagining things. I'm not a little girl. All right, come in, come in. Joe, Joe, pick up on line four. All right. Reverend Winter. Sit up. Reverend Winter. Looked at me. Stared at me. Dr. Rossi, I know what it means when men stare at me. Well, is that what you're accusing him of, staring at you? You know what I mean. Well, look, I've known Reverend Winter for a long time. And? And I find this, frankly, difficult to believe. Well, believe me, please. This time I'm telling the truth. Jill, I don't mean that you're lying when I'm wondering if whether or not you might have misinterpreted what happened. No. Well, I wish you'd give it more than one tenth of a second's consideration. I mean, those things do happen, you know. We had here at the hospital a young nurse who uh, had a, a fine figure, really a great figure. And uh, although she constantly denied it, she obviously had her uniform tailored severely so that it really fit. I don't wear my clothes tight. I don't do anything like that, Dr. Rossi. Well, well I, uh, I had to find out. Okay, you found out. Now, did, uh, had anything happened before this, then? Well, the other day when you were examining Kelly. Yes? Well, you see, we were talking that the girl was going to have the baby, you know, the unmarried one? Uh, Edith. Mm -hmm. After we came out of the room, I was upset. I was crying. And the Reverend put his arms around me, and... I know he was trying to comfort me, but... Well, I'll, um, I'll have a talk with him. Well, that is what you wanted, isn't it? For me to talk to? Sure. Sure? Well, could you talk to him without... Without what? Without accusing him of anything. I don't want to hurt him or his wife. Are you concerned about his marriage? Of course I am. Well, I'm not going to do anything if, if you don't want me to do it. Look, Dr. Rossi, I know I seem like I'm mixed up, but you're the only person I can talk to. Well, I'm responsible for you living in the winter home, and I introduced you to Tom, so... Maybe it's time for you to move. No, I want to keep my baby. And if I move back to the boarding house, the Child Welfare Board won't let me. Please, Dr. Rossi, please talk to him. All right. All right. I'll, um, I'll talk to you. Listen, if, if, uh, if you don't see him around today, make a note for me to call him and see if we can have lunch tomorrow. Yes, Doctor. 
Yeah, yeah, and I remind you that. thinking. I uh, talked to the bank about customer financing. It's pretty strict. Maybe I should line up something with a finance company. They're usually a little more lenient. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, it's a good idea, Steve. Yeah. Well, I'll see you. Bye, Steve. dropping by tonight or any other night. I told you I have to file the papers the first thing in the morning. Right. Well, you come to the garage the first thing in the morning, you get Rod's signature, and then you take the paper to the court and file it. And if there's any problem at all, Stephen, you can blame it all on me. It didn't take you long to lose your cool, did it? <laughs> Beating a long staff on the floor. 
At one time when he was conducting up a storm, he smashed his foot and died of the infection that ensued. And Beethoven came along how many years later? Mm, let's see. Beethoven came along. Oh, that was mucho years later. Well, he was born in 1770. Right. Beautiful. <laughs> you haven't gotten Beethoven's birthday right in years. Rejoice, Pamela. Okay, party's over. How did Beethoven conduct? Well, on the high school court, naturally. How old was he when he conducted opera? Twelve. What was his master's name? Me. Uh, what's the definition of sound? Vibration. Okay. Who, in 1672, in what city, broke 25 glasses in 30 minutes by vocalizing and thereby proving that sound is vibration? Well, the city was Kiev. Kiel. What was his name? Uh, you know what? The next protest sign I make is going to read, uh, down with teachers who ask who, in 1672, in what city could shatter 25 glasses in 30 minutes by vocalizing. I believe I remember that. Look, your mother remembers. Well, thank you, dear, for not saying even your mother remembers. I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Oh, it was. Mm -hmm. What was the man's name? I had to teach him the same dribble. Jeff, that is a tactless thing to say. I'm criticizing his decadent, degenerate educational system, Mrs. Russell. I didn't mean it to be personal. Oh. Well, do you know the man's name, or don't you? No. Yes. Mother. No, no, uh, let her play. Go. I believe his name was Albrecht Berger. Albrecht Berger. Mrs. Russell, everyone knows that Marilyn Albrecht Berger was a ballerina. <clears throat> Johann Albrecht Berger was Beethoven's teacher. Are you sure? Of course. I think you're wrong. Both of you. Music appreciation was one of my favorite courses. Because in that class I sat next to Richard Harrison. I would have enjoyed anything to sit next to Richard Harrison. Mrs. Russell, do you know who could chatter 25 glasses in 30 minutes by just sing out? In 1672, I remember we all gathered at the local drugstore, and we all screamed our lungs out, trying to shatter one thin glass. And I remember Richard Harrison. And I remember how silly I thought it was to have to try to remember who could shatter 25 glasses in 30 minutes. Mrs. Russell, let me shake the hand that stared at Richard Harrison. My dear. Kind of on our side, aren't you? She is, really. <laughs> then you feel sorry for us, right? Oh, the people I feel sorry for, Jeff, are your teachers. Hey, honey, take it easy. Probably the wrong number. <laughs> Hello? Hello, baby. Did you get to his colleague? This is the man in your life. Me? I still am? There is no one else. Then let's get together, baby. Is this afternoon? Yeah, around two, or is it two-ish? Like, uh, how would you like a stroll on the beach, baby? Sounds divine. Uh, a loaf of bread, a jug of wine, and you. And thou. And thou? Hmm. Dad. How are you, honey? How are you? Looking forward to seeing my little girl. I'm looking forward to seeing my father. At two o'clock. Zap. Yeah.